Hey, I'm Dr. Dave Harris, and I want to welcome you to our series of videos on television and video production. We're talking about video switchers, and specifically in this video, talking about the recording of macros. We're using an ATEM switcher, which is a common switcher by Blackmagic. What a macro is, is a recording of a series of key presses with the addition of pauses that will last a specific duration, as well as pauses that allow for user entry before the macro continues. So what we do is we've got the macros setting we push that macros on our soft menu would bring us to this macros menu and we have the opportunity to record macros adding pauses or user weights as our heart desires we want to use these macros for very 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 nice nice things like automation we can record a series of steps and then have the switcher perform those steps at any time that allows us to automate specific tasks like for example setting up a key that brings us to our second reason why we want, might want to use macros, and that's to have complex setups. We may have a chroma key setup, we may have a luma key setup, we may have something on FX1 and FX2, and then we want to use FX1 for something else. It would take us a long time to set up those complex things. Well, we can set them up in macros, push one button, the switcher makes the change, and we now have multiple setups, all without having to perform these tasks in a very, very complex way. This allows us to then use our scarce resources. The switcher that we happen to be using is an ATEM switcher that only has two effects keys and two downstream keyers. By using macros, we have the ability to utilize these two keyers and the two downstream keyers to perform very, very, very cool things when we only just have those four keyers to work with. And lastly, this simplifies our ability to do these complex things using these macros where we don't have to perform these tasks very, very quickly, especially during a live shoot. So how then do we record macros? Well, on the last menu, we have the ability to choose the slot or the macro number that we can use. We do that by just simply moving the dial, the macro number changes, and then we can push the record button on that last menu, which would then start us recording that macro. What do we do to record the macro? Well, once we're in recording mode, all we do is push the buttons, adjust the dials on the switcher that need to be set up as part of that recording. We want to do this in a very specific order, but most importantly, is that the switcher only sequences the button pushes and the dial changes. It does not insert pauses automatically. In other words, what this means is that every button push that you make, every dial change that you make is essentially going to happen in real time unless you tell the switcher to pause or to wait for user input. This can be very confusing for new people because they're like, hey, well, I, I pushed this on the preview button and then I waited 10 seconds before pushing the cut button on the switcher. I want it to wait those 10 seconds. Well, unless we insert that pause as part of our macro setting, the switcher is just going to push that on the preview, push that cut button almost instantaneously. It's going to happen essentially within one frame of the, uh, the switcher sequence itself. It's going to be very quick. So what we need to do is we need to add those pauses if we want them to be there. Now there's a difference between a pause and a user wait. The switcher when using a pause is going to wait for a specific amount of time measured in frames and in seconds. So we push that add pause button and we then have the ability to add the amount of pause by pushing these buttons on the key bus. You'll notice that we've got the one frame, two frame, three frame, four frame, five frame. This is 10 frames right here. And all we do is we just increase the duration of the pause by increasing it by either one or two frames or whatever. These will be cumulative on that last menu. So as we, I'm gonna just go back to the previous graphic, as we push those buttons, it's going to increase the duration right in here. We've got a lot of, cho of choices in that, whether it's one frame or one second, five seconds and so forth. But if we wanna have a very specific number, all we do is just keep pushing those buttons until we've arrived at that specific number. We also have the ability to do a user wait. We can add a pause if we want to, which is what we just did, or we can add a user wait if we want to have the macro stop, wait for user interaction, and then we can restart that macro as soon as we've performed those tasks. So we push that user wait button, the switcher will respond and say that a user wait has been inserted, and then 
the switcher, when that gets executed, that macro gets executed, it will stop the execution of that macro, wait for us to do something, and then we're just going to push the play button on that macro. We'll talk about that in a separate video on how to play back macros. This video is part of a series of videos on television and video production. I want to invite you to our channel where you can find more information, more playlists, and so forth. And as always, subscribe and visit our Patreon page if you want to become a supporter or patron of this channel. I thank you for your support. I am Dr. Dave Harris.